right, Dan, we're live. So, Father, how are you doing today? I'm um, doing good as usual. Uh, how about yourself, Matthew? Doing great. Father, I got a story for you. So today okay. I went uh, to go pick up some sushi for lunch for tag. Oh, yeah. I figured, you know, support local business. Yeah. And uh, you know this already, but the sushi chef at Sunny Dragon near St. Oh, yeah. Matthews, you went to high school with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. 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 And so I went in there and I asked him how he was because I, I go there pretty often. So yeah. I say hi to him. And he said, yeah, he said, you know, I was on Facebook yesterday and uh, Lucio uh, shared a video. And I, I said to myself, hey, I know both of the people in that video. <laughs> so there you go. We're making our rounds. Even All outside right. the parish already. <laughs> okay, we're, we're getting big, you know. I was on Global News about a week ago. Now we're on YouTube. And there you go. Okay, who knows, you know, from now on, right? Uh, yeah, so I'm really edified by great responses from our parishioners and our friends over Facebook and YouTube. Uh, people are genuinely excited about this, our project. So, you know, I'm kind of pumped and thrilled uh, to, to, you know, continue with this project. So it'll be fun. Um, but one thing I would just want to let you, let everyone know once again, is that it's not my personal project or Matthew's personal project is, is something we want to do here at the parish. It is a parish initiative, St. Matthew's Parish Initiative. And I, I think this is a great way for us to connect, stay connected. And also we have full support and I want, I want to call it endorsement from Father Tran, our pastor. So please our parishioners share, uh, <laughs> I should say, uh, uh, like, Subscribe, like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. I'll I'll get there eventually when I feel like I'm a real YouTube star, and I'm sure I'll get that line figured out. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, awesome. So tell us who uh, we're with today. Yeah, so we are very honored to have this guest in our first, very first episode. I'm just you know bring all that pressure. On our first guest, <laughs> someone I got to know quite well since I arrived here, and mainly through RCIA, uh, doing uh, organizing RCIA together for uh, for the parish, and uh, I find our guest uh, just filled with love for Jesus, and also he has great love for the parish. So I thought this guest. Dave McKinnon will be a great fit for our first episode. So we welcome Dave. Hi, Dave. Hey, Father. How are you doing? Okay. Hey, Matthew. You like that intro? Hey. Yeah, I was just nodding off for a minute there, but I, I'm, <laughs> I'm back with you all. Okay. I'm glad. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Now, Dave, I don't know if you remember, but I think back in, when I was in grade five, you were my prep teacher. Uh, I do remember yeah. Matthew. But yeah, and I, I have to give you some respect because um, my prep class was probably one of the roughest prep classes of the last decade, I'd ha if I do say so myself. I, my class even made a prep teacher quit halfway through the year uh, once. That's how <laughs> bad of a class. Wow. And you lasted wow. the whole year. So. Yeah, I, um, I think I lasted 23 years doing prep. <laughs> oh, wow. In the early days. Did yeah. you teach that long? Yeah, I did. Wow, wow. Wow. I did, and I told every class they were the worst class ever, and it made them feel good. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were the first prep teacher to say to our class, before we had a test, you'd say, St. Jude, pray for us. And Hopeless all causes. Of us, all of us, yeah. And then we would say, amen. And then you say, why St. Jude? It says, hopeless causes. <laughs> <laughs> you can't sugarcoat it with young kids, you know? Uh -oh. <laughs> I've got to tell them the truth. Yeah. Yeah, those were good years back in the early days at St. Matthew's. Um, it's been actually, we've been, I was reflecting on it today. We've been members of St. Matthew since 1983. Actually, That's when the our, parish opened. Yeah. Our mm -hmm. envelope was envelope 69. Wow. So, yeah. So it was, uh, a great parish for a young family to, to start in. Um, I think at the time we started, we had Christopher, our eldest of six. And then over the years added, and uh, as you know, Matthew, we have our youngest is Matthew as well. 
Mm -hmm. uh, everybody at St. Matthew's wanted to name their, their son Matthew. So, <laughs> so we did that. Is that why you named your son Matthew? Yeah, it was because of St. Matthew's. Wow, okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. yeah. No, those were, um, those were really good days uh, at the start of the parish. I think um, we had the right priest to start, Father Dion, uh, a great community builder. And um, sometimes the, the fondest memories are those memories when it's most difficult. Uh, and in parish life, at the very beginning, there was lots to do. Um, you won't remember, Matthew, but we had to set up chairs in the gym for Sunday Mass. Mm -hmm. And um, I was headed up a team of about six nights and every Sunday at for 7.30 Mass, we would have, no, Saturday we'd set them up. Then after Mass, we'd have to take them down at the 7.30 Mass. Wow. And at the time it was no fun, but you look back on that with fondness now because it helped us to grow community. Um, St. Matthew's has been uh, part of our family. You know, it's our faith family. And um, we've, it's funny, my wife and I, you know, I'm near retirement and we talk sometimes about where we're going to move to. And the first criteria is to stay within the bounds of St. Matthew's. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. So um, it's been a very important part of our life. And uh, some of the, the funny things that we did back in the early days, you know, Father Dion was great at fundraisers, and we would have a, a weekend of fair, like a weekend fair, and and somehow I came up with the idea to play cow patty bingo. What is and that? So, what is well, that? Well, well, I don't know if you know Bill Cools, but he has a farm, and uh, I would pen off an area, and people would have a pay five or ten dollars to buy a square. So the cow would come up after the 8.30 mass, oh. put, put it in the pen, and we'd all stand around waiting for it to poop. <laughs> oh, I see now. Yeah, and so whatever square it landed in, you were the big winner. So uh, that was a lot of fun. And it wasn't so much fun as I had a cow costume with an udder hanging off my stomach. So. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, you know, we, it was... Great parish life, baseball tournaments, golf tournaments. Yeah, fond, fond memories of the start of the parish. Cool. What were some of the other things you were involved with in the early days? Oh, gosh. Um, a big one was uh, marriage prep. Okay. Uh, some of the people may remember Father Joe Hattie, who was, uh, did marriage prep in the archdiocese. And I remember we had... Um, Roly and Doreen Charbonneau invited Doreen and I to a meeting, and I didn't know what it was about. It was in the upper room at the parish hall there, and uh, Father Hattie's talking about marriage prep, and I, I looked to my wife, and I said, what are we doing here? I don't, what is this? But as it turned out, from that simple invitation, um, he had an incredible influence on our lives and on our family's life. Um, he's, I just talked to him the other day. Uh, he's back in Barry's Bay and uh, always sends his love to the kids. And Cool. Yeah, and actually a lot of people might not know this, but you are involved in marriage mentorship now at the yeah. parish. And that's not really a ministry that a lot of people see unless you're preparing for marriage. Yes. Um, so, yeah, tell us a bit about uh, what that's all about. Yeah, well, St. Matthew's is part of seven parishes that were pilot parishes for this new program. Um, and it's not to uh, replace marriage prep as we understand it today. It's to add to it. And the key feature of it is young couples will um, come to our house when they, Father Tran or Father Lucio, they come and see them about getting married. And they'll come and uh, visit with Doreen and I. And uh, actually, Doreen is the one that does all the work. Um, so we tell them about the program and what the expectation is and send them away uh, with uh, the challenge to find a mentor couple mm -hmm. who they can do the program with. And uh, we explain it to them that everybody understands about business and a mentor, you know, somebody you look up to, somebody who's, you know, 
gone down the path that you're about to go down and can help you to find your way with some ease, not ease, but not going to some of the pitfalls that, that we sometimes do. So um, the couples go and they get a mentor couple who's been married five years, active in their parish, attend mass on Sunday, every Sunday. And then there's a six month program where they meet once a month and do a, a chapter with videos and uh, um, that mentor couple works with the young couple. And the whole idea is that that relationship doesn't stop when the, the uh, program is over. The expectation and desire is that the mentor couple then introduce the young couple into parish life. Mm -hmm. So they might introduce them into uh, discover discipleship, you know, faith studies, Alpha, a Bible study, CWL, Knights of Columbus. Um, we have so many wonderful programs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it's not a time limited. It's get involved in parish life. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think we need more of that. So, David, I could tell you were involved with quite a bit, but recently I could see you're more focused on doing RCIA with me, obviously. Uh, yeah. Is there a reason why you're, uh, is, there, is there a reason why you are more uh, attracted to RCIA or want to give yeah. more time and effort to RCIA? Yeah, I think we teach what we need to learn, hmm. right? Yeah. Maybe. And, and, uh, I've uh, developed a real passion for our faith and um, developed a huge library because I love to read. And what better way than to share that um, with those that at an adult age have made a decision that there's something more to life than just what I'm living. And um, it's been a, this is a second year. Uh, it's been, you get more from it, Father, than you give. Mm -hmm. uh, a really interesting story, if I can just share it quickly, was last year, I remember going, getting ready to go to a class. It was Saturday mornings then. And I had a little prayer. I said, Dear Lord, please, I don't care if the class is good, if I bomb, but let me touch somebody's heart. Mm -hmm. Let me touch somebody's heart. Yeah. And so during the class, I... Uh, talked about um, living in a Shilaway, a large community, when I was, uh, before I was married. And uh, this man came up to me after from another parish who uh, was Muslim and was converting. Huh. Had been married to a Catholic woman. Uh, his father was Muslim, his grandfather, you know. And he came up to me and he looked at me and said, you know, Dave, Something you said today really touched my heart. Wow. And I just looked up and said, thank you. You know, because <laughs> that was my prayer. Yeah. That was my prayer. And um, so, yeah, I, I love it. I, I, yeah. You know, you love to talk about Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I think we, this year we have a wonderful group. And oh. we just feel bad that we can celebrate the sacraments uh, at Easter. But, you know, we hope to, you know, the day for them, their baptism and confirmation and their Eucharist will come very soon. So yeah, we yeah, we ask all our parishioners to pray for our catechumens. Um, yeah, so one we'll one of the things I think, Father, that we talked about in the summer and and would love to work a way of doing it is to make that RCA group more part of parish life. Yeah, we've it shouldn't be just in a classroom once a week. That's right, and so. I think moving forward, that's something yeah. that we need to, to really work on, introduce them into parish life. Yeah. We've, got, yeah. we've got wonderful group of us together yeah. Uh, yeah. that are, are very excited about it. So yeah, I feel, uh, I, I've been very privileged to have a great RCIA team. Like when I came, I knew I'd be kind of helping RCIA at St. Matthews, and I was a little afraid. Uh, not, not knowing the team, like, do I have to do all this? Or how much do I have to uh, get involved? And when I got to know all the team members, I realized, okay, this is going to be a good year. And it is so far. And we meet Tuesday nights. 
even now during yeah. this outbreak, we've been meeting online every Tuesday and our catechumens and team members have been so faithful coming in and sharing their yeah. love for Jesus. So yeah, yeah, we have a great RCIA program here at St. Matthews and we look forward to more people joining us perhaps. Yeah, it's year. a blessing. It's a blessing. Yeah. All right. So I think that's all the time we have for today. So for <laughs> everyone uh, watching uh, this video, uh, feel free to comment down below who you'd like us to chat with next in the parish, and we'd be happy to invite them. And uh, thanks again, Dave, for coming on. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you, Matthew. Yeah, thanks, Dave. And maybe thanks, next Father. time we'll have a Doreen come and join ah, us as well. Yeah. Well, then you get the better half, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good answer. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'll be end with the prayer, but Dave, can we ask you to lead us in the prayer? Sure. And I'll give the final blessing at the end. In the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together tonight to share a few stories about St. Matthew's and the beginnings of it and what makes it such a fabulous parish today. The strong foundation that uh, Father Dion put in place in the wonderful job Father Augustine did, and, and now Father Tran and Father Lucio and Father Nixon before him. We thank you for the parish community, Lord. We ask you to look with favor upon those in the parish that might be struggling your, during this time of the, the COVID pandemic. We ask you for those especially that are living on their own and isolated from others, that they uh, reach out when they need help, or others reach out to them knowing their situation. Um, Lord Jesus, thank you for this incredible Easter season that we're in, the, the ultimate showing of love for us, and how blessed we are to call you um, friend. <laughs> we're not slaves anymore, but we're friends. And thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of your Son and for the gift of the Holy Spirit, that you said you wouldn't leave us orphans. We thank you. Amen. 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 And may Almighty God bless Amen. you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thanks, Dave, for joining Thanks, us. Thanks, Father. Thanks, okay. Thanks Matthew. Thanks.